This video is going to be uh, demonstrating how I actually uh, create some castle pieces from scratch. Uh, I actually, uh, uh, you know, from absolutely nothing, how some of these things are made. And what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, do a castle wall section on this one. Uh, this one right here, this is kind of a drawing and illustration of what I want the final castle wall to be. And uh, what this is, is consists of a corner piece and then a wall section and then a tower that goes in between these wall sections. Now if I need a block of plastic, a lot of times I will simply just make a block of plastic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this plastic right here. This is uh, Smoothcast 300 from SmoothOn.com. I'm also going to use this stuff. This is the Universal Mold Release. I like it when I'm not having to paint anything. Uh, this just gives a greasy surface a greasy surface to everything so that plastic doesn't stick. And what I've done is I've just made a frame, a frame of Legos for this chunk of plastic that I'm going to make. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray this onto my piece of glass on the light table so it, it doesn't stick to the light table. I also like to spray it on this actual frame of Legos. I'll spray it around there so the plastic, uh, it, usually it won't stick to the Legos anyway, but this just makes it easier to make it come off. And I'm going to try to guess how much it's going to take uh, to, do this little, uh, to do this little square of plastic. I'm going to go about that much. And that, once, that much by my scale is about 36, uh, about 36 grams. So really of part B, I need a little bit less. So I'm going to go about 33 grams on, uh, because for some reason this stuff is a little heavier. Uh, so the same amount of volume, but if you go by weight, you need a little bit less of it. So I'm going to go about 33 grams on here. Now Smoothcast 300 sets up pretty fast. This stuff will set up hard. Uh, it'll kick over in about three minutes. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour this in. Now some of it will leak under a little bit. Um, so that's probably just about the amount that I want there. There we go. I almost didn't catch it in time. <laughs> I was trying to catch it on camera where it kicks over. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes or so. Uh, if you feel it and it feels like the plastic's cool, it's, it's fine to, to uh, go ahead and remove it. At this point, what I want to do, you see it only traveled over uh, just about that far along the edge. So, Legos seem to work fine to make a frame. One way I do it is I just kind of tilt it like that, and then these Legos will kind of break off like that and you can see what the uh, edge looks like. I can just clean that up with a knife and I've got a nice solid piece of plastic I can use to start cutting and making pieces with. And you can see I've got a bin of quite a few different uh, different sizes and shapes of plastic scraps. Now the saw I'm going to use to cut the plastic with is a, uh, a three inch diameter saw blade. It's a Microlux saw is what it is. It's a small uh, circular uh, tabletop saw. Uh, the real important piece of equipment here is this little piece right here. What this is, is it's called, uh, I think the brand name is AccuRazor. I will pop it up there on the video. And what it is, is it's got this interesting little slide on the side of it right here. So what it is, is every mark on this slide is five one thousandths of an inch. So what you can do is you can place this thing on here and you can make a cut of a certain size uh, let's say if you're here and you actually make a cut of a certain size and you measure it and what you measure seems to be too big and if you need to take it down by five one thousandths of an inch you simply slide this mark up one, tighten it again and then cut it again and it will be five one thousandths of an inch shorter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this for three quarters of an inch a little bit more and I want to go over a little bit more because things aren't going to work out good on the first cut. What you're going to find is when you cut this, the first cut that you make, especially through a thick block of plastic, there's going to be a lot of chatter in that blade. That blade's going to be vibrating back and forth. And I don't know if you can see, if you take a close look at the, uh, the, side, the front of this block, you can actually see that there are chew marks on the, on the edge of this block right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it really heavy and then I'm going to move this AccuRazor mark up to go in a few thousandths of an inch and then slowly cut it again to make a nice finishing cut. Now in most cases I use uh, permanent double sided tape to stick these to the block. But when I've got a large area a lot of times I use temporary double sided tape because if you use permanent and you stick it on sometimes you can't get it back off again.
look at it yourself, it's very hard to see if it's lined up. But if you put it on a light table, you can see a thin sliver of light that will tell you if it's exactly square or if it's off just by a fraction. This thing right here is pretty much exactly square. So every cut you make, every step that you go, it's best to make sure that everything is perfectly square before you proceed. Another way to keep the blocks uh, square is using a sander. What I've got is a circular sander here. This one's got coarse uh, fine uh, sandpaper on it. This one's got fine sandpaper. And I've actually got the table at a perfect 90 degree angle. So in most cases, when you sand against here, you will end up with a perfect uh, 90 degree angle. Okay, we got them cut and they look nice. And let's see how well we did. What we wanted is 10 one thousandths over uh, 0.75 of an inch. Let's see, put it on there. Pretty, pretty darn close. I uh, got it within about one uh, one one thousandths of an inch. Okay, right now it's at 0 0.76 and then two more marks down would be 0 0.75 which is exactly three quarters of an inch. Okay, now what I've got here are my eight plastic cubes and you might say, why eight? Well, what it is is I have two cubes that are going to be for the corner tower here. I have two cubes that are going to be for one of the uh, towers that goes in between the walls right here. These other two are simply spares. And when I uh, mess this one up, well then I've got a spare to, to go there. Now what I'm here is at the drill press, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to recess some holes down into here. I've got here probably about a quarter inch diameter burr. It's probably a little smaller than that. And this drill press has an adjustable depth setting on it. So I've gone ahead and set it to the right depth so it goes down and it stops. got here is I've mixed up some two-part epoxy putty and what I'm going to do is fill the holes. Now what I've got here I've got uh, four little balls and, and four uh, big balls of clay here for the different holes. I've got a little baby powder and what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply that to my fingers so that the balls don't stick to my fingers while I put them in here. So what I'm going to do is I believe that these are probably going to stick well enough but not completely stick down in the holes. So, okay, the clay that I put on here is pretty much firmed up. So you can see I've got the little knobs on there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sand the face pretty much flat. Now you can see that they smoothed out really nice. Uh, you, you actually can kind of see where that uh, clay is embedded in there. What I've done is I've marked these that are put in at an angle. I've marked B on the bottom of them and I've marked the two edges that are going to be sloped. So I kind of have it, once I cover this up by gluing this onto another block, I'll have no idea where those were. So I needed to mark it in some way to let me know which sides were actually going to be beveled. Okay, well let's hope this actually works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a small drop of super glue and I am going to put a drop on one clay part right here. Come on, come out for me. And another part right here. And I don't want there to be too much glue. But uh, that should be enough right there. So I'm going to set it here. I'm going to take one of these other plain blocks and I'm putting it against a guide so that these will perfectly line up. And I'm going to press them together really, really tightly. So I've lightly super glued them together to make one block. Now what I'm going to do at this point, hopefully that glue is instantaneous. I'll be able to take these and pull them apart. Ah, there we go. So what I've got is I've got one block with raised areas on it and another block with holes on it. And these two will fit together perfectly. Now since I've got a three quarter inch maximum height to my mold, I really can't have bumps sticking up quite this high. So what I've done is I've taken and I've sanded the bumps down to where they only stick up just a little bit off the top of the block. But still that's enough so that when you set this into the holes here, it locks and there's only one place for it to fit. Now at this point, I want these two pieces to be held together while I do all the cutting and sanding of the sides and also engraving details and that sort of thing. So I need to hold them together semi-permanently. To do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a drop of super glue right in between here to glue these together. But it's a very, very tiny drop of super glue. Enough that if I want to, I can always break it apart later. So really, this is too tall. What I need to do is cut it down. 
that specific amount. So, now to trim this down the right amount so that both of these add up to a total of one and a half inches, I'm going to use this specialized little tool. I had my dad make this for me. He's a, he's a machinist now, retired. Uh, but what he did is he took, the, uh, he took one of these. I gave him one of these. These are the uh, guides to the saw. And I had him mount a micrometer on it. And as you turn it to the right, this plunger moves forward that amount. So if I'm on 20, I can go 5 one thousandths, 10 one thousandths, 15 one thousandths. And the more I turn this knob, the further this pushes in so I can get an exact cut on the length here. Okay, let's see how close we are now. We need to get it down to 1.5 for a total height. So I put it on here and Ah, oh, look at that. We're, all, we're only two marks away from it. So I'm going to slide it down two more marks, and we should be right on the money. Okay, my next step that I can figure out is I need to cut the angled sides of the block, and then I will cap it off with this. And as this is angled back, then this top piece will naturally overhang once I glue it on the top. So what I've done is I've taken my jig and I've stuck it onto the block, and here I've got my block, and here you can see I've got the little line. Now, which sides am I going to trim off? I already had labeled them on the bottom. I'm going to trim off this side and I'm going to trim off that side. So what I'm going to do to trim these sides is I'm going to put it in here and you can see that that block is setting at an angle. So I'm going to be cutting off the top and then when I get to the bottom, the bottom should leave and stop right about where that uh, eighth inch mark is. So cap when it meets against the side and against the back you see that it forms an overhang that overhang is going to have to have little braces put underneath of it so if we compare it to the plan now for the straight tower what we've got is the straight tower that actually uh, if we get this centered it actually overhangs on the front and the back sides now the next detail we're going to cut is the groove that goes into the side of the corner piece and it's going to go right about here what I've got here is a miniature drill press and onto this I've got a table and this thing you can turn left and right uh, crank it very precisely in thousandths of an inch one way and then up and down you can crank it thousandths of an inch another way so I've got this set at zero so that once I go ahead and move it down and mill it down I can always come back to the same zero location pieces I need to work on are these little braces that go underneath the tower here.
is effectively finished. Next is all the texturing. What I'm going to do before I texture it is I'm going to go ahead and snap it apart and hopefully it will snap apart correctly. There it goes. And now I've got the two pieces right here that will actually fit together to make our full piece. Okay, the next thing I'm going to work on here is the uh, main wall section. I'm going to have uh, three full wall sections or six halves on the mold. They're actually going to be split down the middle the side view on this thing right here. So what I've got is the piece that actually goes down the middle. Now this will be doubled because I'm only doing one half of this. And what I want to do is I want to sand this down to be an exact distance of uh, 0.09 thickness. So when you have this piece of plastic and a piece of double stick tape and this strip that I put under it, the total thickness of that is going to be the uh, uh, 0.09 thickness is what you can kind of see on there right now. Are just about there. We've got this piece that's cut the right width. It goes all the way down to the bottom. We've got one uh, a buttress brace that goes on this side here, one buttress brace that goes on this side here, and then I've got this angle piece here that's going to slide under and meet right up there. start on the tower tops and I'm really not sure what they should look like exactly but I am pretty set on what the front edge with the three little uh, crenellations
centerpiece that I went ahead and, and put on there. And what I did is I cut these, uh, uh, these little things right here into slivers and I was going to put a doorway onto them and I was going to have one of those on each side. So that's what I thought. And it looked like it, I think it worked pretty good for what it was, but there was something about it that still didn't strike me as quite right. I mean, I could shorten the walls down a little bit, but it just didn't, you know, it just didn't feel quite right. So this I had created for multiple pieces, made a mold of it, and then I took this and cast it, and I took several slices of this little front doorway off of it. So I'm putting those on there, and that's kind of what the look is on top like right there with those on the top of it and you know what I kinda like that better okay my next step is to do all the texturing what I've got to texture are these pieces right here most of the tools I'm going to use for this are these basically small wood cutting tools that these four doorways are actually glued on around the outside. I don't want rubber to flow down into those seams, so I'm going to have to fill all four of those seams. What I've got here is uh, uh, just modeling clay. This is clay that never dries.
made my duplicate pieces with the molds and I have cast them and here is my final set that's going to appear on the final mold. Now these are really, really tight on here. I'm, I believe that they're going to work, but I'm really pushing the limits as to how many blocks I can get on a mold. Okay, well here is my finished castle wall section. This is just one casting of what the mold will be. This is my original drawing of what I thought the section should be. Uh, and we compare it to the uh, uh, final of what I've got that's actually really here. It's actually uh, right here in front of me. Uh, you'll notice that the tower tops are a little bit different than what I had imagined they would be. But, you know, looking at it on paper, uh, they just, they were too blocky. They didn't seem to work. And when it comes, you know, back into reality, uh, a lot of times you can't follow the original plan you had because it just doesn't work and you have to, you have to change things. Anyway, I hope that this was uh, uh, interesting and that you could kind of see the process that I go through whenever I create anything for one of my molds.